Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, U.S. releases video of alleged Su-27 and MQ-9 collision, U.S. Army Golden Knight perishes in training mishap, Sikorsky to build hybrid EV tall test bed. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. U.S. releases video of alleged Su-27 MQ-9 collision. U.S. officials have released video that shows a Russian Su-27 fighter jet colliding with the aft-mounted pusher propeller of a U.S. MQ-9 Reaper UAV. The newly declassified video, which U.S. European Command released early Thursday, March 16, 2023, depicts, albeit less than transparently, the critical moments leading up to and immediately following the March 14 mid-air collision that allegedly resulted in the downing of the $20 million USAF drone. The video was reportedly recorded by an aft-facing camera aboard the MQ-9 and encapsulates a field of view that includes a facet of the UAV's empennage and the lower 180 degrees of its propeller arc. Two passes of a Russian Su-27 flanker fighter jet are depicted. The first culminates with a pixelated screen U.S. officials describe to jet fuel being dumped on the MQ-9 by the passing Su-27. The video feed, restored some seconds later, captures what appears to be the UAV's propeller turning normally. The second Su-27 pass culminates with another pixelated screen but resolves to a view of the MQ-9's propeller turning listlessly and one of its four blades sporting a badly bent tip. According to Pentagon accounts, the U.S. military was compelled to purposefully crash the damaged UAV into the Black Sea, but not before technicians were able to wipe the drone of sensitive data, lest it fall into Russian or Chinese hands. And after the break, International Skydiving Museum elects new president and CEO. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Unbridled passion, unequaled performance, unlimited possibilities. Hartzell Aviation, you are cleared for takeoff. Introducing Hartzell Aviation, leading general aviation companies united by the Hartzell guiding principle of built on honor. A commitment to uphold the highest standards in quality, performance, and support. Hartzell Propeller, Hartzell Engine Tech, Hartzell Aerospace Welding. We are Hartzell Aviation. Now boarding at HartzellAviation.com. Are you tired of tucking your phone under your headset to make a call and having cords and adapters strewn about the cockpit? Experience wireless cell phone communications and your personal music with Pilot Communications Blue Link 2. Blue Link 2 gives you a wearable link to two Bluetooth enabled devices at the same time and can even control your phone and music. Use Blue Link 2 with your existing headset or a Pilot Communications headset from pilot-usa.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some other interesting stories. International Skydiving Museum elects new president and CEO. Australian Graham K. Windsor has been named the new president and CEO of the International Skydiving Museum and Board of Trustees. Mr. Windsor succeeds James F. Curtis III. Since his first jump over Papua New Guinea in October 1968, Mr. Windsor has devoted his life to skydiving. In addition to stints as a national coach, operations and safety manager, chief instructor, instructor examiner, and a parachute rigger, Mr. Windsor was a member of the Australian Parachute Federation Board, in which he served as chairman, primary and alternate IPC delegate, and CEO. NASA selects Axiom Space for third private ISS mission. NASA and Axiom Space have signed a mission order for the third private astronaut mission to the ISS. Subject undertaking is slated to launch no earlier than November 2023 from KSC. NASA Director of Commercial Space Phil McAllister stated, quote, The diversity of currently available commercial orbital human spaceflight opportunities is truly astounding. NASA's commercial crew flights to the space station for our government astronauts paved the way for fully private missions to space like Inspiration4 and Polaris, as well as private astronaut missions to the orbiting laboratory like the one we are announcing today, end quote. World War II era U.S. Airmen's remains identified. The remains of a U.S. Airman who lost his life in the Second World War have been discovered and formally identified 79 years after his death. 
Lieutenant William Montgomery's B-24 Liberator was shot down by anti-aircraft flak on June 22, 1944, while carrying out an attack on a German airfield in northern France. The stricken B-24 managed to limp across the English Channel before losing altitude off the Sussex coast and ultimately crashing on an English farm near Arundel, West Sussex. NAFI plans educational sessions at Sun and Fun. The National Association of Flight Instructors is planning a roster of educational presentations at Lakeland, Florida Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo, the Sunshine State's largest convention, which runs March 28 through April 2, 2023. NAFI's Sun and Fun agenda includes discussions of the association's October 24 through 26 Flight Instruction Safety and Business Summit, which will be held on the Sun and Fun campus. The summit will host current and prospective certified flight instructors, leaders in aviation, industry advocates, government representatives, and media. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. U.S. Army Golden Knight perishes in training mishap. Aero News Network is saddened to report that Sergeant First Class Michael Ty Kettenhofen lost his life in a March 13, 2023 training mishap at Florida's Homestead Air Reserve Base. Kettenhofen had served with the Army's elite Golden Knights Parachute Demonstration Team since 2020. The U.S. Army Recruiting Command set forth that Sergeant Kettenhofen had succumbed to injuries sustained during what should have been a routine jump. What went wrong remains unclear, and the Army, accepting an assurance that the accident remains under investigation, declined to provide further details. A graduate of the U.S. Army's Jumpmaster School, Sergeant Kettenhofen was a highly experienced parachutist who had made over 1,000 jumps during his military career. Kettenhofen enlisted in the Army in 2006, serving as an infantryman throughout multiple combat deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan. Though based at North Carolina's Fort Bragg, the Golden Knights spend much of their winter availing themselves of Florida's weather, which is eminently conducive to practicing the science and art of skydiving. Aero News Network extends its condolences to the family and friends of Sergeant First Class Michael Kettenhofen, for whose outstanding service and demonstrable commitment to excellence we are deeply and sincerely grateful. And after these messages, Sikorsky to build hybrid eVTOL testbed. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. Sikorsky to build hybrid eVTOL testbed. Sikorsky is building a fully autonomous hybrid eVTOL which will serve as a flying testbed by dint of which the company will evaluate new designs and vet novel propulsion systems for future longer range aircraft. The hybrid electric demonstrator, to be called HEX, will have an ample maximum gross weight of 7,000 pounds. The unmanned contraption will be used also to test flight control architectures conducive to sustained hover and mission ranges greater than 500 nautical miles. The turboshaft engine by which HEX is to be powered is GE Aerospace's 1,625 shaft horsepower CT7. GE Aerospace will also supply the machine's 1 megawatt class generator and associated drivetrain electronics. An inveterate developer of hybrid electric technologies, GE Aerospace has previously built similar propulsion systems for NASA and the U.S. Army. The HEX program will be spearheaded by the Sikorsky Innovations Rapid Prototyping Group and its director, Igor Cherepinsky. Sikorsky's innovations team will design, build, and integrate the HEX airframe and electric motors with the company's Matrix Autonomous Flight Control System. Subject system, which will control the HEX aircraft in flight, has been developed and tested over the past decade in low-altitude and obstacle-rich scenarios. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching!